As I searched for God, I saw and felt how powerful prayers can be. Some I care about said big prayers for me in front of God. In 2019, I had a scary 20-minute near-death and out-of-body experience. I was 34 years old and had just given birth to a beautiful child. A tubal ligation went wrong and kept the woman in the hospital for 52 days. Having a damaged bowel caused problems in both my mind and body. Sharing my story helps me connect with others, motivate them, and give hope to people who are going through the same things I am. Life after birth is the place to tell this story. Because I was strong, I had no problems giving birth at 16, 32, and 33 years old. When my health got worse, I always got better ready to jump out of planes, climb mountains, explore, and live my best life with my daughters. I wanted to get a Bachelor of Science in Health Information Technology from the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences and then go back to my dream job at the Arkansas Heart Hospital. My life changed a lot after I had my last child. My baby stayed with her family for up to six months while I fought for every breath. Everyone in my family was there for me every day. My 16-year-old took care of her younger brother or sister. Hopscotch comes to mind. It makes me think of jumping on numbered squares which is a fun memory game. You can play hopscotch with a snap of your fingers. This game became a way for me to talk about my life. There was a task in every square, whether it was a single, double, or complex one. I heard my mother's pleas, my father's cries, and my sister's desperate pleas for me to stay alive, even though I was mentally and physically exhausted. To keep going, I had to go through test after test and treatment after surgery. My faith was put to the greatest test, but I made it through, and now I see God's promises come true in my life. I'm thankful that my scars from surgery always remind me of how close I was to dying. They stand for a new way I can show the world. I'm thankful that angels watched over me on July 22, 2019. Two days after surgery, a CT scan showed a telectasis and a lung that had collapsed. The scan on July 23, 2019, showed that my right colon was full of poop, I had colonic ileus, which means my intestines were blocked, and there was free air in my belly, which means I had a perforation. An NG tube was put in for food and decompressing my stomach. It was tough to say no to a second NG tube, which was very painful. By July 26, 2019, six days after surgery, infections and diseases that could kill arrived. Even though the room was cold, I was too hot to stand. It didn't help to lie next to the air vent. I felt like I was being burned from the inside out by the heat. No one could figure it out except my sister, who, because she is a doctor, suggested that the doctors look for an infection. I was afraid I wouldn't see the sun rise. That night, my mom fought hard for me and got me the help I needed. A contrast-enhanced CT scan of my pelvis and belly showed more fluid and air, which means there is a hole. Right away, an emergency surgery to look around was planned. During the tubal ligation on July 20, 2019, the surgeon found a return of free air, a lot of succus juice, and a 0.5 cm sore on my gut. After several interloop abscesses were taken out, my gut was washed to look for more damage. A wound VAC and two bags were put in the cut to keep it from getting infected. One drain was in my small intestine, and the other was behind my swollen uterus. Klebsiella oxytoca, Streptococcus anginosus, and Enterococcus hairy were found to cause illnesses that could kill the person. My bloodstream and tissues were destroyed after days of not getting medical help, which caused sepsis. When I turned 34 years old on August 16, 2019, I was still in the intensive care unit, IQ, and was told I had acute hypoxic respiratory failure, acute kidney failure, and congestive heart failure with an ejection fraction of only 10 to 15 percent. On August 29th and September 3rd, I needed two blood transfusions because I had extreme anemia and scary nosebleeds. X-rays showed bilateral pulmonary infiltrates, which means I have pneumonia in both lungs, which makes my situation even worse. I knew that pneumonia could kill you. I was taking a lot of medicines and using BiPAP to get oxygen. I moved slowly and with help, and nurses changed my position every hour to keep me from getting asthma, bed sores, and back pain. It got better after three days for both lungs of the person who had pneumonia. The doctor who said I was taking too many medicines might have been right. Morphine, 
oxycodone, and other drugs helped me deal with my pain. These medicines were very important during the VAC changes and dressings for the abdominal wound. It was a powerful experience to see and smell my own flesh, which was left open during the operations. The day before I was sent home, August 28, 2019, was a normal day. After work, my sister came to see me and was kind and helpful. I felt a lot of love from her, who would become an LPN and hospice aide, and from my mother, who worked hard as a cleaner. We laughed, praised God, and watched TV. It was too exciting for me to wait to go home the next day. See you later, sis, my sister said. I love you. I'll pick you up in the morning, I said. I felt a pang of homesickness and was restless, checking the time all the time. Funny enough, it seemed like time went by faster the more I looked at the clock. At that very moment, a group of doctors and nurses rushed into my room, making it feel like an emergency. The team that was watching their hearts told them to act quickly. My heart stopped beating, even though I was awake. I had ventricular tachycardia cardiac arrest. I felt my spirit leave my body at that very moment. I heard the code blue call for a short time and watched as people trying to save lives without getting involved. I didn't feel the shocks from the defibrillator or the cracking of my ribs during CPR. It was like I was in a deep, peaceful sleep, like sleeping beauty. I knew I wasn't in the hospital bed where my body was. I was somewhere else. I was scared and shocked, and I thought, oh no, I just died. Still, a calm feeling of comfort quickly wrapped around me. I was calm and sure of myself. In a dark tunnel, I felt like I had superpowers because I could easily float towards a warm, welcoming light. I looked at it all the time. As I got closer to the light, the dark tunnel turned into beams of bright, futuristic colors, and I felt like there was no end to the area around me or beyond me. The air was filled with the most peaceful sounds. Taking each step closer to the light made me feel more relaxed. I had strong feelings of being loved, respected, connected, and equal. There was no worry, stress, thirst, hunger, or pain. It looked like time stopped. Everything was fine as I got closer to God. It seemed like prayers were flying past me for a short time. It felt like I was getting gifts, and I thought, all of this for me. This event proved that God does hear prayers. I had the feeling that every prayer was for me, even though I didn't know who was praying. It's best to pray a lot. Someone important to me must have told God my story. It's likely my grandfather, who I loved and missed very much. I finally got to a yard where I saw a single flower that caught my eye. The burgundy to red lily stood out in the valley. Its clear stalk was full of life and energy. This was my first look at heaven. Then a fog covered the scene, and it became harder to understand what was happening. There was no clear sign that told me to stay or go back. Some part of me wanted to stay, but another part wanted to go back to my kids and family. It felt like I was being pulled backwards through a tornado when I came back to my body. It was almost like going back in time. While my spirit was separate from my body, I sometimes felt like a stranger in it.